we're going to talk about a question that I had in residency, which is when you're done with training, how do you learn a new surgical skill? So I'd like to invite up um, my colleague from the University of Southern California, Alina Resnick. She's a glaucoma specialist. Mark Grenier, a cornea specialist at the University of Iowa. Ike Ahmed, the chief of ophthalmology at Trillium Health in Ontario. And Ron Pelton, an oculoplastic surgeon in Colorado Springs. You guys, welcome. Share with the group the last new surgery or new surgical technique you performed and how did you prepare for it? So the residency doesn't prepare us for everything. You, will, you guys will learn new skills. You will have to adapt. And being in your shoes is actually advantageous because for someone who has been performing the same procedure for 30 years, they might not be willing to pick up anything new. So you guys come in with an open mind and you're eager to learn new things. Um, I thought my patients would benefit from it. So the first step for me is to see the literature. Look at the patient population and see if it applies to my patients. And then I start seeing patients in clinic, and I run an Excel spreadsheet where I put in what kind of surgery I'm planning for the patient. As soon as I collect a certain number of patients for a certain procedure, um, I try to get trained on it. And you can do a wet lab with a drug wrap if you want to, or you can go to a major meeting and have a wet lab there. I usually try to schedule 10 or so patients in a block on the same day so I can repeat the same procedure over and over and not to schedule any other surgeries that day so I can actually focus. Another pearl that I picked up is actually connecting with a mentor in my own community, someone who has been performing this procedure for some time and go into the operating room with them. I think that they spend with someone who is experienced with that procedure is priceless. Ron, you do some cosmetic surgery, cosmetic plastic surgery. What's the last new surgery you learned? And uh, talk a little bit also about how you discussed it with your patient. What I did was uh, travel to another city and go into surgery and watch another physician. And this was incredibly helpful for me. Like Alina said, I also was then able to watch some YouTube videos and in my specialty, uh, Rich Allen has a, a whole library at the University of Iowa uh, of, of videos of how to do uh, lots of different oculoplastic procedures. And that made this approach uh, much easier for me. For me, operating with another physician and having him walk me through the steps bit by bit was, uh, was a tremendous help. So, uh, Mark, uh, the cornea, they seem to replace every layer in a new way, bubbles, no bubbles. What was the last technique uh, you learned and shared with your patient? This is a technique called corneal neurotization. It's a nerve graft. You take a sural nerve, and this is a, a treatment for an insensate cornea. So that's one thing that is a, an unsung part of this whole equation is, is recognizing the need and where that fits in. Uh, when I heard about this is I consulted my colleagues that I, I knew I couldn't do all this myself, okay? It takes a team. This actually does take at least a two or three person surgical team to do. So I uh, identified uh, the colleagues that I was gonna be doing this with, my oculoplastics colleagues, uh, and actually someone in our institution who trained up in Canada where they pioneered this. So we went straight to the source. So you, you pick their brain, you ask questions, you review videos with them, you, uh, you, know, you do all the things that you would want to do, due diligence. Uh, then uh, the next day we went up to surgery and observed the case, okay? And, and seeing exactly, you know, going on a field trip, seeing, doing your due, due diligence is extremely informative. You know, I think that the other thing is, is making sure that your patients are very well aware that this is where you're at. You're at the beginning of your learning curve with this. Be transparent. Um, so much so to the point where if you think you're gonna have a more um, uh, easy time doing this surgery by putting patients under general anesthesia, as long as it's safe and they understand and they're with it, that's actually a really good move to consider doing. Give yourself the freedom to be able to, to do what you need to do. I'm excited to hear from you, and I'd also like you to comment on your role as an educator. What I've realized is, of course, when I educate colleagues, I get better myself. So it's actually a selfish motivation. Focus on, on you as a surgeon, because you're all different. And one thing I've learned is, as a, as a teacher, residents and fellows and colleagues, is I kind of look at people who are thinking about new techniques and technologies as, you know, three different buckets. You have those that are really anxious when they walk into the OR. Honestly, it's okay and very not certain of themselves and very you know, concerned at how the outcomes are gonna be every day they go to the OR. 
There are those on the other side who are super overconfident, lack the insight into their shortcomings and lack the judgment. And then there's a majority who have a healthy balance of skepticism, but yet are feel confident enough to go into the OR. Hopefully you fit in that middle group, but I worry about either extreme, and either extreme probably shouldn't or should be very careful diving into new technologies and surgery. So the first point is, is have the insight. And actually, it's tougher for you because you guys are all starting practice or, or junior in your, in your careers. Insight often comes uh, with experience. So take the advantage of learning from colleagues about what they've learned. That's, the first, that's one thing I would say as far as new technologies. So I, the re reality is you should hopefully be trying new techniques all the time in your OR. Of course, we don't necessarily disclose every single small step you change, but the point is that I hope you're continuing to change what you do. Otherwise, you're stagnating and falling behind. So. Uh, and you know that's going to be uh, a high chance of success and start, s and start slowly. Nothing beats visiting a surgeon in the operating room. That's such a different experience as far as learning something. And I think most people are very open to that. My biggest concern was my patient's going to ask me, Dr. Ahmed, how many cases have you done so far? And I won't say how, what I thought about my answer would be, but think about that one because that's the question you're going to get when you say, hey, I'm going to do something. Uh, well, I, I picked the right patients. That's the first thing, you know. And I think, you know, remember the patients really trust you. They really trust us for, you know, our opinion. So th I, I picked a few people who I really, who I really had a good relationship in my practice, that were interested in the in, in the procedure. Uh, for me, it's more important to, to have the right patient who I feel comfortable with when I do a new procedure. Not necessarily the patient who benefited from the most in their eye, but but personality-wise and and the rapport we have with the patient, and say that's the person I think who. I, I can be comfortable with because the worst thing is that you have a pro complication which is going to be increasing your learning curve and then you have to go back and explain and then it comes out.